kind of weird vibe. Hi everyone, I hope you're good guy. Welcome for a new video. So today we're gonna talk about kind of trendy lead like industrial, ravey, 90s, trendy lead, call it whatever. Like you can find in the alignment track recently and in a lot of other track and you've been a lot of requesting this. So today we're gonna have a look into it. So first we're gonna have a listen to the rack. Then I will recreate drink from scratch and giving you a lot of tips and advice because what is important with this type of sound is like a pretty basic sound, but there is a lot of little detail that you can add to really make it stay out and make it original and not flat and boring and then after i will explain you what each micro does and so yeah let's have a listen so i've made three versions basically i've made so square and wave table so and square are like used I used analog and you get this more like kind of vintage vibe and wavetable i use i made exactly the same rack but with wavetable and if you are looking for more like something modern sounding let's say so yeah the rack sound like so let's get started so basically the, the main sound i did it's, it's pretty simple but it's more about how you which effects you're gonna put and all of the little sound design detail you can add to the rack which is gonna make the sound interesting so i'm just gonna grab analog and i'm just gonna add a bit of effect because otherwise it's gonna sound very weak so it's our basic patch i'm just gonna add a bit of delay it's a ping pong delay just gonna reduce the feedback because i don't want it too long try it around 30 percent and i filter a bit this way and then a reverb so the reverb is really depend what you want most of the track when there is this kind of lead is like there is just only this lead so you have a very big reverb like the, the sound is in a lot of reverb so it can be around three seconds the dry rate around 40 percent maybe the decay time even five seconds i will maybe adjust it later yeah i wanted to put delay in reverb because otherwise quite hard to sometimes like it's like little detail but sometimes without the effects it's kind of hard to hear so yeah that's why i a little bit of that so the main thing you can do to have this kind of detune sound so you need two so two and you want to detune because obviously this kind of super so trancy lead is all about the detune and the unison so you want to detune the first oscillator and and the second so this is all about experimenting you can have different flavor and you can change it so basically actually i'm gonna group everything here to a rack like this we're gonna build the rack in the same time and you can see you get this kind of vibe already so just before to go in the unison i'm gonna map a couple of macro and shape the amplitude envelope of the sound so you can hear the one of the first macro was the filter so right click here you want a low pass filter 24 db and you want the envelope modulating the filter obviously around four or you can go a bit more if you want something more aggressive you can around five as well is, is fine i'm gonna leave it at five and you want to bring the sustain down because you want something very plucky and the thing is about the gk i want to be able to control uh, the gk release of the filter envelope but as well of the amplitude envelope this way i can when i map everything here i can if I reduce the macro here you can see I can have something very plucky and then something very long so that is really nice if you want to add automation and variation during your track and playing along the filter is nice for the sustain for the amp I will leave around 50 because like this you get a bit more body the attack I'm gonna put 10 milliseconds because just to don't have something too clicky and here the same with the filter they basically kind of share the same envelope just to sustain it down for the filter because you want a very sharp filter modulation you can add a bit of resonance that don't go too far because otherwise this will sound kind of acid 
but a little bit it's nice always to kind of enhance your sound then the next things i've assigned to the macro so here if you go back to your oscillator section you have here the sub sync and i've put in sync and i've done the same with the oscillator 2 and i assigned the ratio to macro 3 and here i'm going and i'm doing the same the reason why i've done that is because this is a good way to kind of add a bit of character and shape your own sound but without changing the sound too much neither so i'm playing the same note and you're gonna hear how you can hear how it's can get this kind of pitch so that can be nice for example during the break if you want to have kind of a rising pitch effect you can automate that to go amp up and up one thing i've done in the original it's because it's going way too up so 80 percent it's fine uh, i'm seeing here the the release decay one thing i have done as well i didn't left 15 seconds for the i put five seconds because the reason why i always try to reduce the maximum value of the macro when i can is because like this you have a smaller range and this way you have more precision when you turn your macro when you turn your knob so this way with the decay for example here oh, sorry oh, let me actually grab this for the decay for the decay here can really have a very smooth uh, modulation so let me just rename quickly the macro just to make it cleaner and all right and so this one is going to be our unison so unison you need to go here and you see you have tune here and you can activate and you can see here voice i will put in mono you can leave it in eight but i will recommend to put in mono and the unison voice you can choose between two or four I said by default 4, but obviously feel free to experiment with 2. And then after you have you. So again, you want to sometimes find out the sweet spot, like something like when I start to hear the effect, but you don't want the effect to be too obvious. Obviously, this is always a matter of taste and what you are looking for. Sometimes you maybe want like a very dramatic stay tuned scent and so you will go a little bit more over but yeah by default i want him something like and so you want to assign the toggle on off of the unison to the macro because if for example you don't want to use the unison mode it can happen and so here you go minimum value you put one and then after this you can leave So one thing you can add to add a bit more character of your sound is vibrato and usually I like to put the rate around 8 Hz and then after again exactly the same idea it's like I will go up until I start to hear the sound and trying to find the sweet spot you can here I start to hear it Okay, one thing I'm gonna do as well straight away is you can see here the velocity is modulating the amplitude and it's way too much. I'm gonna put two. Uh, and because it's four and by default it's, it's way too much expressive for me. I'm not that much as a virtuous to have that much velocity controlling the amp, but yeah. And yeah, next macro I've assigned uh, before to go into the effect. I've assigned the octave of the oscillator to uh, this way. This is nice, can be nice to have like a part in your track to have the variation. For example, you have the same melody, but at one point in your track, it will play like for example, for a bridge or for or the break or whatever. You can play with the pitch here and add variation. And then I've assigned as well the dead tune between two. So what I've done here is I've mapped them, but you can see here they are like minus 15 and 033. And I want this to be the default and the minimum. So I'm gonna just map this one as well. And I need to go map here because you see here, they are all acting like now they are acting like the same so the first one i want it to be minus 0 0.15 and the second one i want to be 0 0.23 and i live like this so this way now when i bring the macro at zero it's like my default and here again it's nice because if i go up you will see it's like kind of pitching up and kind of getting a weird tune as well so you can either add character or you can either using again during the break or during a a period during your track to kind of add variation in this tension by having the kind of pitch rising mm -hmm. 
One thing that can be super cool to do is, is to grab the max for life LFO and to modulate this. Uh, or you can even modulate the sync as well. I mean, like, feel free to experiment because that's something cool that can add more variation even. So this is called the tune. All right, and how about the effects? So the effects is very important because it as well what give a bit of character. And the first thing I've added is amp. So amp is usually working super well with a uh, dead tune super so kind of sound and because this accentuates this buzziness effect so i use the bass mode because as you can see it's add the original patch add a lot of noise and this buzziness as well and so amp kind of gonna reduce that but still add this a little bit crunchiness and this i don't know vibes and i'm gonna reduce the dry wet around 30 percent You see how, I don't know, it's just enhance the sound and you can after go a little bit more with the middle and treble and maybe the presence add a bit more, let me actually yeah, add a bit of more of DK one thing can be great as well, I haven't done it but in the original track, but I really recommend to do it, is experiment with overdrive because you have this filtered in the overdrive and that's, that's really cool. I might actually leave it in the original version. Uh, Because it works really well with this kind of sound so i'm gonna leave it you can do whatever you want with and you can experiment with pedal as well uh, maybe and one effect i've had to add a bit more character i used the phaser but i didn't use it as a classic phaser because usually the classic phaser you will use the lfo and with it will kind of modulate this frequency over time and will kind of create this weird phasing effect i didn't use it like this i keep the lfo down <laughs> Uh, I've put the dry weight, well, I'm gonna leave it at 50% like this, you're gonna understand, but I'll bring a bit of feedback and you're gonna hear when I move the frequency. Scale is kind of formant effect as well, and by the way, formant kind of things you can experiment with, I really recommend you go to EQ and you go to your formant and you can, for example, bring this EQ, you see it's like kind of weird EQ and that can be nice as well to add a bit of character to your sound and yeah what I've done is I've mapped this so I, I didn't put that much dry weight by default I put 50 percent but so that was without and that's with I don't know it just enhanced well the, the, the sound so that's one thing I've applied and you can vary the I will send the frequency and I will send the toggle on off here as well again because you want to be able to, if you don't want this effect, to deactivate it. But I really like the character that it adds. Phaser and then the last one, it's a delay. So I've added the delay because sometimes you, you can, delay can be nice for the arpeggiator kind of vibes. But if you want more like a lead or maybe you don't want delay. And maybe you just want a longer reverb. So that's the case where you can. And yeah, again, you can experiment. with your things so a couple of things i haven't told you that you can do is you can play with the semi done for example if you just put one it's great to have like kind of weird vibe like there is a a, a track from nico moreno uh, she is corrupted or i guess it's can get this kind of vibes just by detuning one semitone and can be interesting as well and to to try and
but obviously you can something more musical maybe seven semitone or even five that's really up to you to experiment with Uh, yeah, just feel free to try different kind of weird stuff. And yeah, that's for the so one. The square one, basically what I've done, I wanted a different, you can have different in flavor with the square one. Even if you, you usually initially super so unison is like with super so, but you can go with the square. And what was well with the square, you have the pulse width here. So I will put around 30% and you can modulate the pulse width. And that's where you, things gonna get interesting. And so I'm gonna go to LFO here. It's controlling by LFO1 and I'm gonna go again 8 hertz it's 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 something nice let me just you can hear like by modulating you can get this kind of that's without the uh, LFO modulating the pulse width and width so you get as well this kind of super sound and you can do the same with oscillator too and so again like LFO2 7 Hz uh, let me remove and now you again you get a different kind of uh, super so which by using a square and yeah that's pretty dope that's why i created the, the square version to add this and to give you idea as well how you can modulate the pulse width then i've made a very stable version because if you want to sound it a bit more modern and it's exactly the same rack i've just used like all the modulation is the same you see you have a filter modulation with the envelope lucky uh, so all that is the same you see any sound mode I'm not gonna go back again because it's and you see I have the pulse width as well you can control here modulating if you want or no yeah the only thing I've done here is uh, I've assigned the map of the uh, waveform so like this you can shape and the same macro control the both uh, waveform for oscillator 1 and 2 and I use the OB6 shape so if you want the saw obviously stay around in the middle here and here again I put it, uh, uh, I put the glide and if you want something you can put bring a little bit more the sustain to have this kind of legato glide effect you can do the same as well eh, here if you go in your amp here you can maybe bring it up here as well and here as well bring it up a little bit so this way now And obviously if I don't put the glide here, but yeah. And you have just to find the sweet spot. And yeah, one cool thing that already can add an arpeggiator and just kind of play over three or four octave so yeah that's one thing you can do as well which is uh nice adding arpeggiator i had as well this cutter pad uh this is kind of gate it's a it's a rack i've made i will put it in the description it's uh basically to get it kind of transy scattered Yeah, that's gonna be interesting to combine with it can be a uh, good and yeah i think i show you everything so don't be shy to experiment all of the little tips i give you along the way you can uh, try to experiment with and see what fits well for you i hope you like the rack guys i think i've shown just 10 percent of its potential because there is so much that you can do with so yeah don't hesitate to experiment and as usual everything is available for free the link in the description of the rack and the midi files and thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and see you soon guys bye bye